discussing the issues that make Phoenix a world-class city. Now, On the Issues. Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Phoenix City Councilwoman Thelda Williams. May is National Military Appreciation Month. And as always, we love to recognize the women and men who have served and continue to serve our country to protect our freedom, including Jason, who is directing our show right now. Thank you, Jason. On this episode, we will be discussing two organizations that honor and support our veterans and their families in unique ways. My first guest is Shaika Riley, founder of the Horse Rhythm Foundation, a nonprofit offering equine assisted services for veterans suffering with mental health disorders and physical disabilities. Welcome to On the Issue, Shaika. Thank you so much, Thelda. It's great to be here. Well, first of all, tell me what your organization is. Uh, well, we're, a, uh, we're kind of set a little bit different than a lot of organizations in the fact that we use horses for therapy, but we kind of go a couple steps further. First of all, we, um, we serve a specific type of people, and that's your veterans, your first responders, and their families, because we ourselves are made up of combat vets, disabled veterans, and first responders. So we've been there, done that. So it makes it easy when we use uh, what we're doing with the horses and the activities we do with the horses for therapy, it makes it easier for, for us to know what they, they need to get done. Uh, we were military PAs, the group that, that came together to really want to found this and put it together. And so um, because we were able to deal a lot with PTSD and traumatic brain injuries, we knew exactly how we needed to, to mold this organization to put it in and be able to get the best benefit from it. So. Yeah, I've heard a lot about uh, horse therapy for children mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and for um, other people who have disabilities of one type or another and how beneficial it is, but I never thought of it for vets. How did you come up with the idea? Well, you know, it's been out there. There's different organizations that are out there that, um, that actually certify people, like EA Gallon, PATH, there's different organizations, and they certify people for this. So it's been around for a long time. Um, they just started finding that with PTS that they're, that they're seeing that it's really beneficial because of the, it's an experiential way of learning and using metaphors. And the thing that's been really nice is the fact that there needs to be more research, right? So we actually, as a foundation, are getting together with uh, different universities, and we're actually one right now, particularly we're working with, to start doing more research on it. And that's been real exciting for us because we're about to do it. We're about to take off with a bunch of research this summer, and we're real excited about that. So we can actually have more out there so the VA and other organizations can see the true benefit of what we're doing and what's, what's happening. And there's organizations throughout different states that do this with that specialize in our veterans. And, and that's the big thing as a, as a military PA position assistant. You know, one of the big things for us after practicing for 20 years on the conventional side I wanted to make sure people understood that there are a lot of organizations out there doing children, but when we do veterans and we do first responders, you need to be able to have the experience in that culture or else you can cause a lot of damage, you know, to, to these individuals. So it's a different group altogether, so. So how many uh, vets have you helped? Oh, hundreds, <laughs> that's for sure. We've actually relocated on a facility and we first started and we were told we were lucky if we see 60 in a year, you know, or, or 10 in a year. And that first year we saw 60 and then we moved in closer into your district and um, that was a great location for us but that particular ranch had to shut down um, the neighbors started complaining because we were starting to see too many veterans uh, the va was vanning people in we were seeing first responders coming in and we got to where we were seeing upwards of almost 100 a month and uh, with the amount of traffic that, we were, that was coming in, neighbors started kind of complaining. Uh, that particular ranch uh, had to shut down. They didn't have all the permits that they needed, you know, correct and stuff. So they shut down and we scrambled to where we're at now, which is called Sundancer Stables, which is a, a phenomenal place, but we have 80 boarders and three horse trainers. And so uh, we have to work around all those and we deal with suicide, you know, prevention and we deal right. with, uh, you know, with, with the PTS, the traumatic brain injury, we do subs abuse, we deal with it all, military sexual trauma. And these are all very sensitive issues. And we, because we are licensed medical providers, we have to, we abide by HIPAA. So we have to have a lot of privacy there. So we've come to the point, you've always heard of people saying, you know, if you build it, they will come. Well, we've had that they will come, but we haven't built it yet. <laughs> so we've kind of come to a point now to where we, we have to have our own facility the, for the privacy alone. And for the amount of veterans we're taking care of, we have to have our own facility. And so that's one of the issues, one of the things that we're doing right now is trying to raise the funds. We, we found a piece of parcel that we want that we think would work great. It allows us to be able to have the veterans have the 303, the I-17, the 101 to be able to get to us easier. And uh, so we're pretty excited about it. So now we're on, a, we're on the mission to, to be able to raise the funds so we can, we can help all these, you know, in, these veterans, females. Well, I know you're looking for donors. And now we are looking for donors. We have a gala coming up. Okay. On October 24th, uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio is going to be our speaker, along with uh, Mike Broomhead as our MC. So we're real excited about that. 
And um, so uh, we are now looking for uh, uh, this. And the whole idea of the gala is to raise money for to be able to get our place that we're looking at right now. And and so we are looking for presenting sponsors and, and uh, all kinds of different different supporters that we can have for that and donors for that. Uh, that money that we'll raise for that night will go toward uh, being able to get our place. So we're real excited. And um, you know, we're not just going to be a typical place where people come in and do horse therapy. We want to have a transition center there because these veterans come back, especially from combat, and uh, they are not ready yet to go back into their home life. And we see a lot of problems with that. So we want to be able to have a place for them to be able to stay, and we want to have a wellness center. We already have all the doctors and everybody lined up for that because your, your body cannot go through the trauma it does and not be able to, to, be able to have um, something else going on with your hormones, your neurotransmitters, everything else. But we tend not to run those labs on the conventional side because they're pretty expensive. So um, we, we find that through integrative medicine, we have to kind of change that. But so we're real excited with the, with the gala coming up and we really would um, please just get on our website, um, on our front, our homepage there, you'll say the gala and you'll click on it. And it'll take you to our uh, sponsorship package to, to be able to help us out and support us. We, uh, we definitely need that because um, you know, these, these veterans, you know, speaking from a veteran too, we, we just deserve it. You know, you've given everything that you can to, for this country and exactly. for the people in it. And so we should be giving top notch back and that's not happening right now. I and know. that's what we're about. So. It's horrible. I, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, the it's, lack of services for vets is just it is. It's I really, just it's, think it's horrible. Yeah. And how much money are you trying to raise? We're trying to raise 385,000. Okay. So, and uh, we need help. We need help from, um, I mean, everybody out there and every little bit helps if you, even if someone says, well, I only got five bucks, I mean, everything adds up and we appreciate every cent, you know what I mean? That, that somebody, whatever anybody can afford to help us out, um, it's just desperately needed. And, and you can go right to our website and, and be able to click and donate on there. And your website it's is? horserhythm.org. And rhythm is R-H-Y-T-H-M. People usually uh, have a problem there. So, but www.horserhythm.org. Uh, you can also call the office and we can talk with you and stuff too. And that number is 602-688-7424. Um, but yeah, we, like I said, we would welcome everybody to come out to the gala, um, you know, click on that and buy some tickets and uh, we, we'd be excited to have everybody there, so. Tell us a couple of success stories. Oh, okay, I've got quite a few of them. Um, <clears throat> we've had, uh, right now we're working with a, a veteran, uh, and, and he was a blind veteran that came to us, um, very angry, uh, PTS, uh, lost his sight in, in war. And um, he uh, was very shut down, very, very shut down. And uh, with the, the horse therapy, it really just kind of brought out, he was actually staying at home, um, suicide thoughts, you know, not going out anywhere because now he's lost his sight. And, trying to kind of deal with that whole thing. And so we, we, we put him through the horse therapy and he did exceptionally well. We've had him for quite a few months. And, um, and usually it's a short term type therapy because it works really well a lot faster than what we do inside clinics and stuff. But um, through the different uh, therapies he has with the horses and everything and the activities with the horses, he has learned to develop, uh, increase his self-esteem. Um, he increased his, his trust again with people um, he's, his independence is back there, which has been just absolutely Great. amazing to watch that. And, and we do a round pen exercise with individuals into where we teach them, especially with anger, when they have anger issues, is that we, our horses are amazing. They're very spiritual animals and how they reach these guys and connect with them. And uh, we will have them in the round pen. And when the horse, we, every one of the different uh, gates of the horse represents something going on in that life of that individual. And with this particular individual, we had had it to where um, the, the, the run, the gallop, the canter, whatever you want to call it, was when he was in an anger state, when he was somewhere and he'd get really angry and get built up. So when we have him in the round pen, and they're not used to being around horses, but when he started getting that horse going, they feel that anxiety up there. And so we address that with them. How does it feel to be like that right now? And they are like, I don't like it. And they go, well, that's what people are feeling around you when you're angry like that. So, so then we said, okay, now how can you bring yourself down? How do you bring this horse back down to a walk? And, and they're like, well, I don't know. And like, why don't you start calming yourself down right now? Because right now you're feeling your blood pressure up, your, your, your pulse rate up. So we start doing these breathing exercises in the middle of the round pen and the horse goes right down to a walk and to a stop. And then it turns in. And then as soon as he, the, the veteran is completely rested, the, the animal, the horse actually walks up to them and then puts their, their head right up on their chest and starts breathing to their breathing. And oh uh, the connection, so they learn That's that amazing. when they calm down, they get that connection. And uh, when they're angry, it's a, it's a chaotic state and nothing wants to be around them. And there's, there's, they don't get anything accomplished at that point. So they start, we start doing these exercises to where we get to a point with this particular individual, he can actually get himself you know, up and get the horse going without even having to touch the horse and then bring himself back down and bring the horse back down to a walk. And, and he's been, blind. 
and he is blind, yes, and he actually rides now. So uh, it's been amazing. So he does therapeutic riding, and uh, he's now, he's progressed so much that he's actually even gone off to sorting. And so <laughs> it's just been amazing. He's been an amazing individual to watch. And I've got 100 stories like that. And, and you'll see another organization that you're going to talk to next going to take it from there, you know, with Gordon and Team Veterans. They're going to take it from there and tell you, have we taken it to the next step to work with him with his blind dog and, and with another organization. And so, um, and I've just, you know, I thank, uh, I thank Gordon and Team Veterans for what they've done, you know, for us too and everything to help us. So, uh, but it's been, a, it's been an amazing um, journey for all of us, for us as being veterans and being able to give back. And that's the other thing that's the core ingredient for horse rhythm is that our veterans come in and they take classes and then they turn around after they've gotten to a certain point of their healing and developing their coping skills they turn around now and then volunteer for the organization so they can pay it back to another veteran or another first responder and that's just been so it's been this one big family we're all volunteers we don't receive a paycheck so all of us have either regular jobs uh, a lot of the medical providers that are involved in here they're working and then they get off and they still we've got people a core group of people for the last three four years now that have been putting in their regular hours at work and they come and put another 20 hours in a week with us and they're j and just religiously and like i said we're all volunteers we're paying it back we've all been there oh so, i congratulate uh, you and everybody who works with you oh, thank and you. i want to encourage anybody watching this show uh, to send a check make a donation in some yes. fashion uh, because i think it is a, a wonderful program and your success i mean says it yeah. all yes. uh, <laughs> and you're an amazing woman, so I want thank to thank you. you for coming on the show and being part of it. Well, thank you so much for your support, and I really appreciate you having us here. So, You're welcome. You. Up next, we'll talk with a Navy Vietnam veteran helping provide support for his fellow veterans. Keep watching on the issues. What would you do if you saw a dog, a cat, or a horse that looked like this? Animal cruelty and neglect is a crime that needs to be reported. I'm Councilwoman Thelda Williams, here with my rescued pets, Henry and Cheyenne. And I'm Councilman Michael Novikowski, asking for your help. If you ever suspect animal cruelty, call Crime Stop, the Arizona Humane Society, or the Sheriff's Office. Animal cruelty is a crime. And together, we could stop it. An Iraq War veteran who lost his sight as a result of combat injuries has regained his vision with the help of three organizations that teamed up to give him hope for the future. Roland, a Phoenix resident, visited Guide Dogs of the Desert in Palm Springs to be evaluated for a guide dog. If the evaluation went well, he could get a guide dog free to help him see. Nevertheless, he was nervous and afraid of failing the evaluation. And I was pretty nervous whenever they took my cane, though. And stuck the uh, handle for the dog to guide me in my hand. It was like a, kind of like a moment of, you know, insecurity, you know, I guess you would say. Like, I just wasn't sure. It made me, like when my stick left my hand, it made me feel real timid about taking a step on my own again, you know, just because you don't really know, like, what is out there, you know, when you step. And like I was nervous when I first started to walk with Valor, but then, like when he showed me that he was going to stop and he was taking care of me, you know, it helped me like walk a little faster. You know. Team Veteran Horse Rhythm Foundation and Guide Dogs of the Desert worked together to arrange Roland's visit to Palm Springs to Guide Dogs Compound for his evaluation. He has been receiving equine therapy at Horse Rhythm Foundation when Shika Riley, Horse Rhythm's founder, asked Gordon Brown of Team Veteran where she could find a dog for Roland, who was turned down by the VA. Brown, a Navy veteran, connected Roland with Bob Wendler of Guide Dogs of the Desert. Thankfully, Roland passed his evaluation and feels the guide dog will be just what he needs. He says it all started with therapy at Horse Rhythm Foundation and he's simply thankful for the help he is receiving. Well, I just feel like, you know, I was real lost, you know. I mean, I found them, you know. And I just feel like I didn't really care, you know, too much what was going on in my life until I found them, you know. And I just hope like that 
that the dog can, you know, do for me what the horse does for me, you know. Because it made me, like, care about my life again. Welcome back to On the Issues. I'm Councilwoman Thelda Williams. Joining me now are Gordon Brown and Paul D'Agostino from the Team Veteran. Thank you for being here today. So, what's Thank Team you. Veteran? Team Veteran is a for-profit company, and we donate 33% of our revenue to support veteran causes, specifically veteran charities that are doing what needs to be done outside the pharmaceutical range. Uh, horse Rhythm is a, is a phenomenal example. Guide Dogs of the Desert. We're working with these groups and many others. We, we, don't, we don't do therapy. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. They're doing phenomenal work. We just raise the money for them. So, Gordon, how did you get into this? Oh, boy. <laughs> when I came back from overseas, um, I ran into some problems with the VA. And I coined a phrase many years ago, 85, that the first cost of freedom is supporting our veterans. And over the years, I've noticed that um, with my own disabilities, I'm, I'm a service disabled veteran. I was exposed to asbestos, Agent Orange, Carbon Tet, TCE, yet the VA doesn't look at those. They make us prove that we were exposed. Well, every veteran out there is running into these issues. And if we're relying on donations from corporations or government budgets, we're constantly running into financial issues. So I came up with an idea of using two employee benefits and then donating up to 50% of our income to create the funds that are required for these legitimate charities. So how did you get involved? Oh, well, I was doing a documentary on veterans state of veterans in America today. And um, I reconnected with Gord. I'd known him before in businesses that we were both in at the same time. And when I found out that what he was doing, it was a natural for the documentary because the suicide rate's sky high. With 20, between 22 and 30 veterans a day are committing suicide. And the highest number of those, that percentage, is, are Vietnam veteran, er, Vietnam, Vietnam era veterans. Um, for a lot of reasons. They were neglected to begin with. A lot yeah. of them never got care. They never even told Gordon that he was eligible. So he didn't even know he had benefits for till years after. So he could, and many of them, those veterans were exposed to different issues, we'll say. And the VA is, has, has got a lot of, does a lot of good things, but they've dropped the ball in a lot of areas. So if we can give money to organizations that, um, can support veterans outside of the VA, why not? That's just an extra thing that's, that they can fall back on rather than have to worry. You know, it's difficult when you have to rely on the government all the time. The government does a good job in many areas. In some areas, it just doesn't do a very good job. That's so what I read in this morning's paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I got started, just by, by being involved in a cause. And my cause kind of became Gordon, or my cause kind of became Gordon's cause. That's kind of how it happened. Oh. Well, <clears throat> when we were doing that documentary on veteran suicide, it took me back to when I was at the Naval Drug Rehabilitation Center. I was a senior counselor there, and we dealt with a lot of suicides there. And one of the things that we were missing were the red flags. But we also realized that pharmaceuticals lead to suicide, because a lot of the effects of the pharmaceuticals are suicide ideation, uncontrollable anger, irrational right. behavior, but it's drug-induced behavior. So when we were doing the suicide documentary, Shaika Riley was also in the documentary, and I went out to meet her one day around Christmas time. And of course, because I'm Navy and she's Air Force, she knew that I could get the job done. Oh, that's it, huh? Got so, it. <laughs> so, so she asked me if I knew anybody that could provide a guide dog for a blind Iraq Army veteran. So I made a phone call to Bob Wendler, the, the uh, director of canine operations. He was also a Vietnam Navy veteran. And I said, I need a dog for an Army veteran. I apologize, it's Army, but can we help him? <laughs> and we started laughing about it, and he said, it's done, brother. So of course, Shaika had already told me that they spent a year, year and a half looking for a guide dog with eight different charities. Nothing had happened. I make one phone call and it's done. 
something just didn't hit me. So I drove to Palm Springs, met with Bob Wendler, spent three and a half hours there going through his facility. What an incredible operation. And when he told me there were 121 dogs on the waiting list, that's when I realized done meant six, seven years from now. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's, I can't believe there's a waiting list like oh, that. Yeah, and yeah. It's, the need's not being addressed. Well, and so when I addressed that with Bob, he said, well, no, he's at the top of the list. And I said, well, how's that happen? I'm a vet, you're a vet, he's a vet. He went to the top of the list. Six days later, January 3rd, we brought this gentleman, this Army veteran, out for the assessment. He was panicked, scared out of his mind, because if he didn't pass the assessment, he'd be relying on a cane for the rest of his life. So you see a, a man almost being dragged down the street by Valor, the black lab. Ten minutes later, you see him come up with a big Cheshire Cat grin on his face. We get him back in the conference room, and he asks Bob, well, how, how did my assessment go? And Bob, of course, turned it right back, and he said, I don't know, how'd it go? You tell me. Mm -hmm. Well, Valor had my back. He stopped every time there was an elevation change. It was incredible. So Bob said, I guess the assessment were, went very well, oh, didn't it? What a heartwarming story. So on the return trip, I was driving halfway, so the gentleman was sitting in the seat with me, uh, passenger seat, and he had the biggest grin on his face, and he was so excited because all of a sudden he realized that his independence was coming back. March 24th, after multiple times of Shaika teasing him that he was going to get a chihuahua, <laughs> He received Valor, the Black Lab, on March 24th. Remember, this all started December 28th, March 24th. This man now has his independence back. Obviously, God's hand was there. Yep, and, and we did that by making phone calls. Can you imagine what we can do with the funds that we can raise? So if you're a decision maker out there, if you have a small company, contact us and we can help you help veterans yeah. make more of these guide dog stories a reality. And the company that we get involved with, they take credit for the donation that we actually make. We make the donation out of our own pockets, but the company takes credit for it. Employee benefits are, are usually tax deductible. So it's it a win-win-win. It really is a true win. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm a, Firm believe you, and animals heal. Oh, um, absolutely. Um, Service well, dogs. Yeah, for whether PTS, it's whether it's a dog, it's it's cat. It, it can be um, horses. I mean, they have a real value and really contribute so much in the healing process. Because I'm a kind of like you. I think that uh, so much of it is self-induced when you're taking that prescription medicine. That um, oh, yeah. It's incredible. That, we, we just as we were talking before, what you see the side effects on TV um, right. scares the devil out of you right from the get-go. And, and you were talking about um, testing. Right. Well, one mother, um, her son committed suicide. When they went back and they looked at the drugs that he was on, he was on 15 a day. Well. Seven of the drugs were single prescription drugs. They should have never been combined with any other drug. Mm -hmm. He had seven of those. There were a number of black box drugs that are being issued to veterans in active duty military. That's a restriction. You don't give it, you don't give it to a person 18 to 25. What's the age of most of the soldiers? Actually, wasn't it 18 to 22, to even on the younger side? Yes, right, but the black box uh, medication is very restrictive on who you can give it to, and yet these are given all the time to the veterans in the yeah. active duty military. And I know it, it really impacts young people. Oh, absolutely. They're very when, when you have to When you have to have liver and kidney function tests done because of the medication you're on, you know there's something wrong. You're failing the kidneys and liver. You're doing permanent damage to these individuals. You're shortening the lifespan. You're certainly shortening the, the quality of life. And the easiest thing to do is hand them some more drugs. Yeah, hand them drugs true. to counteract the side effect from the other drugs, <coughs> yeah, and then you, just, you cascade it. When, right. 
we have a man that now has a guide dog. He's off all his meds. Why? Wonderful. Because of horse therapy, equine therapy, what, what Shaika and her group have done with him, along with Valor, so, this incredible animal. How do people contact you? Our website is teamveteran.org. Um, phone number is 602-561-7805. Very good. And we're, we have a YouTube channel. Ah. So, so we look videos. for you on there. Well, I thank you very much for coming in thank and telling what you do and for the things you've done already. Uh, you don't know how many people quietly appreciate everything you're doing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the time we have for this month's On the Issues. If you have any questions or comments about this show, call my office at 602-262-7444 or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district1. We'll see you next time on the Issues.